So the last thing that I want to talk about in MA time in mass is quality control. I'm going to post this document, this document that I created a number of years ago in the um, the the means for testing some of this equipment and the uh, variances and how inaccurate they should be uh, really hadn't changed. KVP, there's a little bit of a discrepancy uh, between textbooks, but uh, timers and, and MA stations and things like that really haven't changed fundamentally over the years. So timer, and <clears throat> you need to understand we're, we're not going to be testing over this information, but I want to introduce this to you because this is the most mind-numbingly dull portion of the curriculum. Um, just got to say it like it is. It's, uh, it's pretty awful. And we're going to cover it in the fall semester when we go back through imaging. It's the last thing that we'll cover in that semester. And I, I, f I feel like maybe if you've been exposed to it before then, then it won't be quite so bad um, at that point. So this is something I'm going to put into your module so that you can have it um, and you could review it. You could take a look at it. But what I'm not going to have you do is, is calculate exactly how it is that, that you um, perform these tests. What I want you to know are just the basics. The timers have to be plus or minus 5%. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, timers are inherently more inaccurate at short exposure times. So timers generally, um, they need to be within plus or minus 5% of what it is that, that you set the time to be. So um, if you are making an exposure at a, a reasonable exposure time, then it the, the actual time that you make the exposure should be within plus or minus 5%. That was that uh, 0.95 to 1.05 that I used in the last recording. But if you get down to 10 milliseconds or less, then again, your timers can't respond very quickly. Um, and that's the, the time that it takes to start the exposure is what they call interrogation time. And the time to terminate the exposure is what they call extinction time. So if your exposure time is 10 milliseconds or less, then that interrogation and extinction time comes so close together that your timers have a difficult time responding to it. And in that case, then we can have as much as 20% inaccuracy. That's why we have reciprocity failure is because we get so short that your your machine just can't um, can't deal with the, the short exposure times very well. So uh, timers, plus or minus 5% unless it's very, very short, and then it's plus or minus uh, 20%. Linearity is a check of, of adjacent MA stations, or of MA stations, accuracy of uh, MA stations. And they have to be within plus or minus 10% of adjacent MA stations. So <clears throat> KVP, timers, and linearity all have to be tested at the same time. Uh, and pretty much all of these uh, QA tests are going to be tested at the same time, but they have to be tested at the same time. So you may be thinking, okay, well, we've got a 5% change here. Uh, let's don't even consider that. We've got a 10% change here. Uh, these things seem to be stacking up kind of like uh, compound interest. Um, that's pretty inaccurate at 15%. And you're, you're right. It is, but then you have to consider how much of a change in MA and time that you have to have in order to see a visible difference on the image receptor. And again, because of digital processing, uh, the only only way that you're going to see that truly reflected is in the, the index number and not the appearance of the image itself. And that number is 30%. So is that 5% and that 10% really going to make all that much of a difference? And the answer is no. If both of them are right at the very edge of the allowed difference, if the timer's shooting 5% too low and, and your linearity is 10% too low, 
then you're looking at five plus ten is fifteen percent. It's really going to be a little bit higher than that because it it would be kind of like compound interest, but it's still going to be only about 16, 17% difference in uh, your index number. And the, visi the, the visible difference between images is, is just not going to be existent. So <clears throat> we've got a lot that, that we have to consider in, uh, in mass QA, quality control. Uh, quality that'd be QC um, because mass is controlled in a lot of different ways you set your MA you set your time you got mass if you photo timing though then you don't set your time your time is auto automatically taken care of um, in addition you've got mass that should be similar between rooms of similar type and that's what we've got in MR to MAS output. It's linearity, linearity being accuracy at MA stations, uh, but this is linearity between rooms of like type. And by like type, what I'm talking about is um, the difference. You, you can't compare a high frequency in a single phase machine. You got to compare high frequency to high frequency. You got to compare a single phase to a single phase. You really have to compare a, a three phase six pulse to a three phase six pulse and not a three phase 12 pulse. So it's got to be of like generation. The generators have to be the same in order to, to compare them. And even there, uh, you can have a, a plus or minus 10% difference between the rooms. <clears throat> Reproducibility means the exact same exposures, we need to receive the exact same exposures. So re reproducibility means that if you set a particular technique, and in this case it's going to be MA, TOM, KVP, you should expect the same exposure for the same um, settings. So you make an exposure, you should be able to, to count on that same exposure time after time. But sometimes in the changing between exposures, and I've mentioned this before with the, the KVP, uh, the, the difference in KVP may be because some of the, the contacts slip in between um, making exposures. The key to reproducibility is you got to screw up all your um, settings. So you set a, a technique, and it could be any technique, maybe 60 KVP at 100 MA at 0.1 seconds, 0 0.01 seconds rather, then what you're going to have to do is make that exposure and take all of those exposure factors and mess them up. Just, you know, uh, drive your KVP up to, to 100, then back down to 50, and then back up to 60. Take your 100 MA, drive it up to 400, back down to 50, and then back up to 100. And same thing with the, the seconds, uh, just mess them all up and, and then eventually bring them back to the exact same uh, exposure factors you had before and make exposures, uh, serial exposures, being exposures over and over again and see how similar the output is on those. And your reproducibility should be also within plus or minus 5%. So by the time you get to all these individual 5%, 10%, um, you, you might get to a point where you just start to see a little bit of a difference in um, image quality, but that shouldn't be significant. So again, you don't operate your automatic exposure controls as far as mass goes. So we've got to evaluate that as well, but um, the the uh, variance is very similar to uh, your uh, variance in, in linearity and your timer settings so that your overall mass, your reproducibility should also be <coughs> plus or minus 5%. Linearity should be plus or minus 10%. So uh, you make your exposures on that automatic exposure. You should be able to uh, reasonably expect the same exposure time and time again. 
your automatic exposures, if you remember, are just detectors, um, and they set your time based on the amount of radiation that comes through the patient. So if you have size differences, um, you've got a hypersthenic patient versus asthenic patient, then what should happen is that the uh, the exposure time should remain longer for the hypersthenic patient over the asthenic patient. So that overall, your density should theoretically remain the same between exposures. Same thing with KVP. If you change your KVP, you should reasonably expect to see um, similar images with changes in KVP. If you increase your KVP, then you should, um, the, the detectors and the, the photo timers should give you a decrease in mass to compensate for it. Now, if you notice, KVP correction, patient size correction, are probably, uh, I'd say they are the largest um, variances that we're, we're seeing in, in quality control, and that is that you're going to see 100% change. You're allowed to see 100% change in density. So if you've ever noticed and paid a close enough attention whenever you're, you're using the AECs, you will see some um, anomalies. Uh, they're not really anomalies. It's If you make an exposure on a patient, and let's say the patient moved a little bit, and you have to reshoot, um, and the you've got the same patient, and the size hadn't changed. Um, what you what you're going to see in a lot of cases is whenever the, the the machine shoots, there's going to be a difference in the mass in a lot of cases. It almost never is going to shoot with exactly the same mass. So uh, because of that, there's a, a quite a, a uh, lean or uh, lenient variance for KVP correction patient size changes in photo timing. Now, those density controls are the plus and minus things that you see on the control panel. Um, if you're doing an open mouth odontoid, some people like to use like minus one on an open mouth odontoid just because of the difference in, in tissue density uh, between the base of the skull and the teeth in the, the upper portion of the C-spine. So some people may use a, a minus one density. So those have to be evaluated as well. Um, the, there's really no um, good way to um, describe exactly how much of a change you should have in between uh, those density controls because some of your density controls are just plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. Uh, some of them go all the way up to plus minus five. But what we should see is 10% of what is stated by the manufacturer. So if the manufacturer says that uh, from normal density to a plus one should be a 10% change. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If the manufacturer says that a, a change from normal density to a plus one is a 30% change, then it should be within 10% of that 30% change.